Okay. Um, today we're going to be building a sort of robust nested component uh, or block, as I like to call it, uh, in Figma. Um, so you can see here we've got uh, an example product card, and it's going to be you're going to be able to have different variations: um, one button, two button, no button, uh, no accordion. So it makes it very versatile so that it can be kind of used uh, over and over again uh, without having to create separate components for each for each state. Uh, and then if you saw uh, my last tutorial that we had uh, an accordion, that is built in here as well, just so that you can see that it does work and it is adaptable to the height of the container. So. Uh, we'll get started. What I like to do is I like to, so you can see the finished component here, I like to break it out into blocks and components. Uh, a component is, I think some people call them atoms, uh, and then this would be, I guess, your molecule. Um, but we have all the different components we need to make this up, and then we actually create it and its variant, which we'll get into after. Um, but the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to create a button component. I've already done this for the example, but I want to kind of show you guys uh, kind of how I came up with it um, and why there's different states and, and what that means. So the easiest way, first thing to do, is going to create some text. I'm just going to say button. I'm going to spell it right too. Button text. Okay, you set that to be. Um, let me use some poppins. Set that to be whatever you want, and do 16 point, because that's good for most devices, bold. Um, and then what you can do here is you can surround it with a frame, or if you go Shift A, it'll add it to an auto, a Figma auto layout already. <clears throat> and here you can see there's padding, everything around it. So first thing we'll do is call it button. Um, we're going to switch it to the center. I'm going to... I'm going to give this one like eight radius and I'm going to add a fill color and then we'll change my text color to white. Yeah, except I want to do it the other way around. So, yeah, black. I'm just going to give it a little more side padding and 20 and then we're good to go. So there's your button. And then the first thing you're going to want to do from here is going to create a component. So now we have a component called button. Um, and then one thing you can do is you can click in to the text. And um, right over here where it says content, you can click on this little arrow. And you create a content property. Text is fine. Default value, good enough for me. So uh, now we've created that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go here. And I'm going to go um, add a variant. So up here you can add your variant. Okay, that's good. I'm going to make. I'm going to call it secondary. I'm actually going to add property one to say uh, style. And I'm going to click on the first one, and I'm just going to change that to say primary. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to edit this to make a secondary button. Um, so we will give it a stroke of R3. And then change the text to black and get rid of our fill. And now we have an outline button. So this is our secondary button style. So now we've got two different buttons, um, one for primary and one for secondary. You'll see in, in, in this example, I have much more than that. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to actually add an icon to this. Um, I've got one already in my components. So I will drag that in. I should have done this on the first one, to be honest with you. But I didn't. And then we'll change that to white. And I think I'm going to make it a little smaller. There we go. So now we have a, an icon, and I'm just going to copy that, paste it into there, move it over, and change it to black. 
And now the one thing you can do here before we make any more variants is you can select that icon and shift select the other icon. Go over to layer, click the little create boolean property, and then we'll say show icon. We'll leave it as true. And then uh, over here where we have our actual icon, in case we have a bunch of more icons in our library, I'm going to click that arrow again, and I'm just going to call it icon. And that'll let us select an icon um, once we use this asset. So now uh, I'm going to click on the overall component. Um, I'm going to add a property called a variant, and I'm going to call it format, and I'm going to go desktop, and create that property. So now each one of these has a style of primary and format and desktop, style of secondary and format and desktop. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this. I'll bring it over here, stretch it. I'll bring it over here so it's easier. Um, you can see I've got an error here because I have too many components with the same um, uh, variables. So I'm actually going to change this to say mobile. And what we'll just do is we'll just, uh, we'll just beef up the text. So we'll maybe can make it a little bit of a fatty button. That's all we'll do for now. Uh, and then we'll take this and we will create a variant of it. Drag it over as well. Do the same thing, beef up to 18. Uh, and then we will pick mobile. So now we have a button that we can um, do primary, secondary, uh, desktop, and mobile. Okay, so that's great. So now let's get on with creating our, our um, product card. So the way I do it is I start out and I, I grab, uh, I just start with a frame. It doesn't really matter how big because it's all going to change anyway. I'm going to change this to product card example. Uh, I'm going to change the fill, just set up some quick values here to get started. It's around the corners, good enough. And then I do just a little bit of general layout. So I'm going to have a product image, drag that in. Uh, I'm going to add a, a title. And then I will give that uh, my H1 property. And then I will give some text. I'm not going to look up more with some text, so I'll just copy this. And it has got the style body, so that's great. Then I'm going to add my accordion in. And then I'm going to add my button that we made. Zoom in so you can see this a little better. Sorry about that. Uh, and then I'm going to duplicate that button. And as you can see, I can click on it and I can type my text here as learn more. Uh, and then you'll also notice that all those variables we created are here. So here I can change it from primary to secondary. I'm going to leave it as desktop. And I actually don't want an icon on this one. So now we've got two buttons, our accordion, our description, our title, and our product image. Um, so now to help lay this out, lay this out for us and start making it responsive, we are going to start putting all these in an auto layout. Uh, so I kind of work from the ground up, like the deepest down to the highest up. So I'm going to select my two buttons, I'm going to hit Shift A, put them into an auto layout, I'll change my space to 20, and that's good enough for me there. And then because I want my bottom buttons to stay on the bottom of the frame and these to kind of work with it, I'm going to put these in their own auto layout as well. So I'll select all those, shift A, I'm going to set it to be top left aligned, and I think I'm only going to give it about 12 spacing. Um, just double check that these are top left aligned too, that's great. Uh, and now I've got these two, and then this, 
And because I want this to be a side by side, I'm going to select my little layout here. We should be naming these as we do them. So this is buttons. And this will be content. And then I'm going to select my top content and my buttons. I'm going to hit Shift A again and I'm going to auto layout them one more time. Call it. And then I will add left align that. And then I'll just click on my product card and I'm just going to add auto layout. And I think we'll do the top left on this one. And we'll set my spacing to something a little bit easier 50. We'll do padding of 30. Padding of 30. So now we have a really nicely laid out product card. Um, the one thing here, we'll have to go down a little bit as we do this, but we're going to click our content and set it to fill container. Um, that also means we need to set our top content to fill container. Uh, the buttons don't really matter, so we're, we'll just leave them. And then make sure that everything in here, all our layers inside there, are also set to fill container. And now what that does uh, is that lets us stretch this out and everything sort of works with it. Okay, uh, the other thing we need to do is make sure that our main container here is set to hug. And this is set to, we're gonna set our content to fill the container. And then we are gonna set um, our spacing mode to space between and that puts our buttons down at the bottom. And I'm actually just gonna change this because it doesn't look very good to turn. Or we'll keep it even 30. Okay, so now we have a product card that is responsive, that has um, a nested component that we've created. Um, so now we'll actually go through and do what we did with our button. So we'll, we'll click on our title. Oh, first, what we need to do is create a component. So we're going to make this a component. Then we're going to click on our title, go down to content, and we'll call this title, create a title there. Then we're going to click on our text and click on create property, and we're going to call it description. And now what we're going to do is we're going to click on amenities, and under layer, we're going to create a Boolean, and it's going to say, you know what, show accordion is great. We're going to create that property. Then we're going to click on our button frame. We're going to do the same thing. Uh, create property, show buttons. That's great. And then what I want to do is take it one deeper. And I'm going to click on my learn more button. And the same thing, we'll go down to layer, create a property. I'm going to call it show something button. All right. So now we have product card where we can turn on and off our accordion, our buttons, and uh, a second button. So that starts to make it very, very versatile. And now the only other thing I did for the, for the component I showed earlier was if we want to have a mobile version, um, a lot of times because this is responsive, this is good and this works great. Um, however, because of the side to side nature of it, it won't automatically stack. So what we're going to do is just create one more variant. I'm going to call it mobile. We will change this to say uh, my state format. And this one again, I'm just call it desktop. And now in my mobile one, um, I'm going to need to select that and it goes through my auto layout i'm just going to push down because we only have two going back and forth um, i can hit down and then drop it right below um, so i'll just make this a little longer so we can see 
Uh, I know that most of the mobile designs we've been doing are about 375 in width, so I'll just do this right now. I'll change it to uh, 375 minus 20, 100 would be 335. So we'll bring that in there. We're going to select our image and we will just shrink that like this. Obviously, any mobile styling you want to apply, um, you're going to have to change this to say hug. I will change this title to my H1 mobile. And then this is looking good, this is looking good. Now these buttons, uh, they could stay like this, but they don't really fit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna push them down and then I'm gonna switch that to say full container. And I'm gonna select each of my buttons and I'm gonna set them to full container. And now I have a mobile version of my product card. So when you go to use it, you can see here, we have our, our product card and I can turn off the accordion, turn on the accordion, change the title, change the description. I can show one button or two buttons and my buttons are completely. Now the only issue we've run into here is that now this comes into the middle. And that's because we have a space between um, set on this. Uh, there's other ways to do it where you don't need to use space between, but because the amenity accordion expands and contracts, uh, it actually will bugger that other way up. So I had to set it to space between. So the only caveat on this is if you hide your buttons, then you just go in here and you just choose packed. And then it's back to normal. So that gives us a product card that has a variety of uses. And the best part is if you were to take your desktop design and create a mobile version of it, so we will call this mobile page. Uh, we'll just adjust our gutters and margins here to 20, 20. I have these set to fill, so they'll fill everything in. And then if I take my mobile page and I set the width to 375, I can click on, see how our product tile looks pretty buggered up. I can click on that and I can change the format to mobile. And now we have a perfectly fitted mobile version of our product tile. So there we are, creating a responsive nested robust component or block uh, in Figma. Uh, don't forget to like the video, stay tuned for more Figma tutorials, subscribe, and uh, check out uh, my other featured YouTube channel where I do offline and off-grid stuff with my friends. Thanks for watching.